How are you doing? It's uh, Niall Keady here from Balbriga News and I am just in Raymore Educate Together Secondary School where we are going to launch or see the launch of their nurture room. Um, so uh, we'll just go inside and we'll have a look and see what uh, this uh, nurture room is all about. together opened in 2016 but I was at the launch of um, a monument arts festival recently enough and I heard a group of people talking and one of them was saying there's very special things going on in Braemar Educate Together um, and I was interested and I learned more and I think we've seen this evening what a little taste of what that is and um, so thank you to all the musicians you're absolutely fantastic and the singers it was really really lovely and I was saying, I think I was saying to Kathy, I think this is the first time we've all been invited as councillors and deputies and ministers to something like this. It's so lovely for a school to open its doors 
and, and we will come if you ask us, so please do, and it's a real honour to be here. Um, I suppose one of the best things about being there is that you get to travel around Fingal and see the best that's going on in the communities, and the really empowering, affirming work that's being done by so many people. And this uh, nurture room that's being opened today is a fine example of that. Um, when Cathy asked me if I would attend today, I was absolutely thrilled, and I knew this would be another occasion where I leave with my heart feeling much fuller than when I arrived, and that is the case already. And um, this is very special for me because, as well as being there, I'm a teacher and I work in special ed, so I fully get the benefit and the impact of what this room is going to mean. Not everyone comes into school ready to learn. Um, back in the olden days, we thought that we thought everyone just comes in, they sit down, and, and you're ready to learn. But we know that that's not true, and more so now, I think, than ever. Um, I think some of the students that I've taught over the years who, who come in and they may be gone through very, very difficult times at home. They may have just been recently bereaved. It could be that they're just their confidence is so low that they're not able to learn. And then they behave in certain ways and we think they're acting out, but they're not. They're just communicating with us that they're not ready. So what this nursery room will do, hopefully, is that it will give them the space and the time and the resources to walk through and to be themselves and to feel like they belong. Um, we know that it, unless we feel safe, we just can't learn, we can't work, we can't do anything. We're operating from the most fundamental, fundamental part of our brains when we feel unsafe. So this room will really create an environment where people can feel safe to come in and partake in the most valuable learning I think there is, which is hard learning and life skills that they're going to bring with them throughout their whole life. So it really is very, very special. One of the key relationships in the nurturing is going to be with the adults in the room. And we know from all research done that students just need one good adult in their lives. And I don't think as anyone who works in a school, um, teachers, SMAs, staff, every interaction we have can be a positive intervention. Um, and that's something that always sticks with me. Um, Maya Angelou, one of my favourite uh, people, says that when we know better, we do better. And I think for the children who are going to be coming into the nurturing, they're going to get an opportunity to really see empathy role models, to learn how their brain works, understand their bodies, and, and you know, really try and manage emotions so that they can begin to thrive. The way I try and think about it is for people who maybe wouldn't understand it or the importance of it is, if you came into work or to school and you were starving, or really, really thirsty. That's all you would be able to think about. So for a lot of students who come into school, emotionally and socially, they're parched and they can't learn. So for me, the nurturing is, is giving them the first of us this and that they can take it at their own when they need it and then bit by bit. The room might have walls, but I imagine it's gonna permeate throughout the whole building. And the learning that they do there, they're gonna bring home, they're gonna bring it into the communities and it's gonna have so much far a wider reach than we could ever understand. So, um, this really fills me with hope that this is happening today. I want to commend Kathy, Zara, and all the staff involved. Um, great things are happening in Braemore, and I wish you continued success as we open the nurturing today. Thank you so much. Susan Gibney of Nurturing School Dialectity. Good afternoon, everyone. It's an absolute pleasure and a privilege to be here with you and to be part of this celebration today. I have to say, the mayor, she took the words right out of my mouth there. Everything I was going to say, she has already said, and that is wonderful to hear because as a fellow teacher, I know where she's coming from and she knows where nurture is coming from too. It is um, wonderful that Educate Together has had the foresight to get together as a, a group and look after their schools and apply for the funding to have um, this training available to all of their schools. 
if you go back a decade from today, just over a decade ago, I was principal in a, in a school in Sandyford in South County Dublin, and we had children who could not settle to learn. We had children who badly needed an intervention that would help raise their self-confidence, their self-esteem, their self-awareness, their resilience, their um, ability to be able to engage in school life. And we looked at everything, couldn't find anything. We didn't have money to go anywhere to find something different that was going to make a difference for them. And a lady in the locality, who was a single lady, no, no children, not married herself, um, died and left a bequest in her will. And that bequest was, to go towards the, um, the, to further the education of children in her community. We heard about this, applied for it, got the funding, and we were successful. Because of that, we were able to bring our teachers to the UK, where at the time, our teachers in SNAs, at the time, the, the training wasn't available in Ireland, so we brought them over, we got the training, we came back, and we opened our nurture room on a special occasion like this. We never looked back. It was absolutely fantastic, the difference it made to our children, to our staff, to our school, and as the mayor said, out into the families and the communities beyond. We wanted to spread the word. We were eager to tell everybody you have to do this, but training wasn't available in Ireland. So when I went to Black Rock Education Centre then as director, we started offering training to our local schools, never thinking that there were schools all over Ireland who had the same needs as our own school. And very quickly, we had spread that, I had to spread that training to schools from Donegal to Kerry and back to Dublin again. And the uptake has been fantastic. But more than that, the results and the outcomes are absolutely amazing. We are hearing back, and Dara, I know I'm going to talk to you in a few minutes about the results already in, in, for Braemore here. Within weeks, you see a difference in the connection, the engagement, the participation, and the inclusion of all students in all schools. And now, post COVID, it is more important than ever because it's about reconnection, re engagement, re inclusion, and making sure that students whose school lives have been fractured over the last year and a half can now participate fully again. And, uh, uh, be, be fulfilled in their school lives. And again, as the mayor said, it's life skills they are learning. It's about relationships and about how we can engage in life around us. And the, our, your students here and students in all of the Educate Together schools who are engaged in this project will learn life skills that they will help them succeed at school. It will help them succeed as individuals. It will help them succeed in their working lives. And that will spill out and the ripple effect will um, it permeate to society in general. So what you're doing here today is absolutely something that is so special that will not just affect and um, be, be good for the students who are in your school today, but for their children and their children's children. This will have an impact on generations of children who will come to Braemore. So well done to everybody who has worked so hard to bring it to this point today, to all of your teachers who have given so much of their time to sit with us and do the training in the evenings, some with babies on their laps and babies, and um, putting them to sleep in their arms as, the, as they've been listening to the, the, are engaging in the training. It has been a huge commitment, and it is a huge commitment going forward, but you will reap the benefits and it is going to be fantastic for everybody. So thank you for having me here. Well done, everyone, and enjoy it. It's going to be great. Thank you, Sheila. And um, just to say, Sheila is a student here in the school. I love to see a student as well. Um, she looks like a staff member. <laughs> she looks like a staff member because uh, she helps us out with an awful lot of things. But um, thank you very much, and um, I think it's important to note that she is a student. Uh, tonight is very much led by the students. Dara organised the whole event and invited everybody, and then she asked the students, how do you want this to go? And their input was very important, and what you see here is music, um, you know, our students introducing, they're helping out this evening. We have some of our Kinera, our prefects, and students from um, around the, the School helping out, and so it's very much run by the students, for the students, and for our school community. Um, as you can see, I'm a very proud principal of this school. It's a dream come true. It's finally got to the stage where I feel like a real school. We now have 630 students 
in our school consulting in 2016 with 48 students. Um, you can see the posters behind us here. We're very much a family, and belonging is really important to us here. Um, the posters behind here they show our clan system, and as well as the names of the clan were the first uh, teachers that started here in the school, and their names in Irish. And the students have the nice idea that we recognise the first teachers to start in the school, and then the students came up with the logos for each of the clans. And uh, they kind of represented what the teacher represented, so the art teachers, maths teachers, things like that. And they designed the logo, designed the slogan. The clans have students that are from maybe first year to sixth year mixed in together, so that we have senior students working with junior students on a sense of belonging, teamwork, and um, having fun activities, but also um, promoting the message of the school. You know that we are a team. We are work, We do work together. Um, we listen to each other and we try and help each other to achieve, to be the best that we can be. And that's for everyone, that's for our students, our teachers, our parents and the school community. We want to be really important in this community and we want to be really a part of the community, not just the school up on the hill where the kids go to. We want uh, the community to feel that they're very much part of our school and it's really, really important to us. What we do in the school is all about nurturing. As we use the start of practice. Um, the staff that we hire um, want to be involved in nurturing, caring for the students, supporting them to be the best that they can be. Uh, the students that come here say that they can feel it when they come in the door. They get a welcome in the door every morning. They get a welcome in class. We try to nurture their talents and their strengths. Um, as you can see there, this slide there, he um, runs our radio station, he does all the tech technical work, um, did some work for us in the summer as well. Um, the girls over there are prefects, our senior students, Kinnera, you know, they run our assembly and things like that for us, and our um, musicians. You know, when you come here at lunchtime, it's not quiet, it's not quiet at all. We have band jam, we have uh, ukulele Thursdays. We have art clubs going on, the forest going on, we have children out in the yard having fun, playing um, traditional games, chasing, things like that. It, it, it's not a nice atmosphere. Um, if you like quiet rooms, it's probably not the place for you at lunchtime, but uh, we do have a quiet room for students that do need that little downtime. When we got the opportunity to open a nurture room in this school, I was absolutely delighted because I had experience of nurture rooms. Um, when I was in my first school that I worked in, um, I was introduced to the nurture room. Um, we were off the training um, in the UK and in Ireland, uh, in Ireland, and they set it up in the school. And I could see the benefit for the students. And not every child was, was the same or needed the same type of nurturing. And what the box of profile did was it helped to identify the needs and what the student actually needs um, in that kind of nurturing. And sometimes you don't, don't even need to profile, you just look at the student and say, do you know what, they just need a cup of tea and a chat and just a check in every day. And that's what nurturing is about. And that's really what our school is about. So when I heard that Salesforce and Educate Together got together, and they have this opportunity to fund nurture rooms because it, it needs money for the initial setup, it needs money for the training, uh, the profiling, and to maybe get a few pieces of furniture and things like that. I jumped at the chance. I'm very much of the opinion, though, that it shouldn't be just a room, that nurturing should permeate throughout the school, and that all of our staff and all of our students know that this is a nurturing school. And when you walk out into the community, that's what people will say about it. Yes, we do all of the other things that schools do, but we also do this well. So, um, although we're opening the nurture room tonight, we're very much saying this is what we are about in the school. And I want to thank, well, thank you for, for the training, I want to thank you for the funding, and I want to thank everybody for coming here tonight um, to help us kickstart um, the next phase of our nurturing journey in the school. 
Um, we were a bit nervous about hold, holding a, a live event tonight as such, but we thought we do social distancing well. Sarah assured me um, that everything will be done brilliant. And it's just, we haven't had an official opening, but this feels like a good start to our official opening of the school. And we hope you enjoy tonight. And I'm going to hand you over to Sarah, who didn't initially want to speak, but I really think it's important. Um, she's leading the way here in the school. I really think it's important that you hear from her and her experiences. Before I go, I just want to say thank you to her family, who have also helped out so much tonight, and I really appreciate it. As I said, three more of the family, as a team, and you know, you're very welcome here. Okay. confidence in themselves and need learning support. Children who have a good start in life are shown to have significant advantages over those who have experienced distorted attachments, childhood adversity and trauma. They tend to do better at school, attend regularly, form more meaningful friendships and are significantly less likely to offend or experience physical or mental health problems. The nurturing approach at Braymore offers a range of opportunities for young people to engage with missing early nurture experiences, giving them the social and emotional skills to do well at school with peers, develop their resilience and their capacity to deal more confidently with the trials and tribulations of life for life. Our nurture room is furnished to provide a home environment within a school context. The nurture room has a relaxation space, a kitchen and dining area, and um, a, a learning area. The relaxation space gives students the opportunity to connect and reflect. This space encourages calm, well-being, and positivity. The kitchen and dining area provides students with the opportunity to participate in real time. This is a time where caring and sharing is demonstrated. It encourages communication and social interaction. It provides basic learning experiences in many ways, as well as promoting life skills. The learning space is specifically tailored to each group or individual team. Teaching and learning activities offer opportunities to broaden students' experience in a range of skills. An emphasis is put on improving communication, social skills, and working on cross curricular activities. The students benefit from much needed individual attention from the nurture room teacher. The individual learning needs are catered for and individual targets are implemented to improve learning. Each student has a set of targets that is built into their nurture room program. So looking at schools, um, the looking at our schools document sees students' well-being as an intrinsic um, well-being as intrinsic to this holistic view of learning both as an outcome of learning as, and, and as an enabler of learning. It recognises the crucial role of schools in promoting and nurturing students' well-being through their practices in key areas of school environment, curriculum, policies and partnerships. Our nurture room opens this September and already it has a huge impact on our student body. It has opened up the possibilities for so many students that have participated in it so far. Their behaviour in the classroom has significantly improved because they feel that they are able to go back to class and learn. Um, I would like to thank, um, on behalf of all the nurture team, I would like to thank Susan Whitten and Sandra Irwin um, for all their guidance and support through our nurture school journey so far. I would like to thank my colleague, colleague Zoe. Um, I couldn't have put tonight together without you, so thank you so much for that, Zoe. I would like to thank the music department for putting together a wonderful performance for us at the start of this event. I would also like to thank all the staff of Braymore who are part, we're all part of the Braymore family and that's the best way that I can describe the community within this school. 
I would now like to invite you all to participate in a tour of our school. This will be led by our wonderful students who have given us their valuable time to stay back this evening and is, is a, put their hard work and contribution to our school community. So um, Nikolai is going to lead the tour ahead. So if everyone would like to follow Nikolai. Thank you so much. As Laura said, this was done by us um, back in, I think, uh, was it second or third year? Oh no, it was first year. First, first year. Yeah, with the, yeah, we had like a uh, little hot waxing done in first year. And then these are some of the students, uh, students artwork that they've done uh, in this class as well. So. Yeah, okay. We did these in, because uh, like, you know, in our school we get the trial art subjects in yeah. first year. And so uh, students got to try out art, and when their first art they did critiquing, is this what it's called? Pardon? Can we call it critiquing? Yeah. Don't quote me on that. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a while, it's been a while since I've actually done it. But um, we, did, we all did that. Um, that was our we all got to try it, like, our yeah. whole year group. Pacer. So. Yeah. And I think it, like, these artworks I think represent, like, people's kids that are like, oh, wow, the art is what I want to do for yeah. so, uh, Amazing. Kind of well, like, you know? yeah. It was very creative as yeah. well. We used different crops and stuff also to try. And we didn't, we weren't quite sure at first how to use it, but like when Sanjana taught us, like we actually found it really fun as well to use them. So we were doing it more often up in first year. So does anyone have any questions? No? What's the value on these? Because they look pretty. Nice. <laughs> 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 like what we did Okay, now guys, we would like to, this is AJ's art and studio. Welcome to my room. Um, I just, I'm, it's a pleasure to have all of you. I just want to say that many projects that we are do doing in this school are focused on community and on engaging of, in com uh, uh, with community. We're looking at different aspects, different issues. Uh, in our community, you can see behind you there, there is a project on poverty. And above that, there was a project as well on uh, endangered species and animals and uh, behind you as well you can see there is a project we're working on at the moment and it's uh, focused on poverty as well and homelessness so students are trying to represent homelessness and poverty from their own perspective so they're doing a research project they're looking at the theme of poverty and then they're trying to visualize it as well so our plan is also to support some charity organizations as, as well with uh, hopefully with the fundraiser money after Christmas so we have an idea of having an exhibition and um, uh, hopefully inviting some people as well but we'll see how it goes anyway so thank you very much for um, visiting this room uh, as you can see it's a creative space there's lots of colors there we're working on it it's a work in progress at the moment it's also worth noting that AJ was voted the best teacher in Ireland for development education last year so <laughs> It wasn't really, you know, like this award which I got last year was amazing, but I think it was really for my students because they worked, they worked so hard. And uh, I always say, it, you know, it's their work. I'm just here just to facilitate them, but it's really them, you know. So thank you. So we have another art teacher there as well. We have two rooms. We are very, very lucky. We have two rooms, lots of space. as well and as you can see she's trying to turn it into this kind of a like
growing space with lots of plants. I think her idea is, she's not here at the moment, but I think her idea is to, to kind of make it really friendly. And she, you know, she's got lots of visual aids, as you can see. But we are very, very blessed with the space that we have in this one. And we have a brand new filament as well, which hopefully we'll be using soon. So I am proud to be a part of this community, to be honest with you guys, because we have so much equipment as well, and we are really supported by the principal. She's also an art teacher, and I think that we're very lucky to have a, a principal who is also an artist. You know, I hope you enjoyed this room. Thank you. Oh, there she is. Yes, there she is. All right, everybody. Now we're going to have a look at recycling materials over here. Students like I love technology so much because it's been like this. And because we have like the and you know the equipment for equipment, yeah. We have a lot of I hope you enjoyed the tour of our school. Thank you very much to the Balbriggan community for watching this and thank you to Balbriggan News for um, making this possible.